an amazing phenomenon that I would have never dreamt of. Um, it's been 17 and a half years. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't really want to use that, but you can't hear me. It's been 17, it'll be 18 years ago, this coming uh, holiday season for Christmas. I'll believe it. I was given uh, a golden retriever puppy by two good friends of mine because I, I was going through a tough time and uh, was also working as a social worker, working with kids that were going through even much more difficult times in foster care, kids who were being abused and neglected. And I had the, the flu for Christmas, going through divorce, trying to find a place to live, living on my buddy and his wife's couch. And he said, Merry Christmas, and handed me this eight-week-old puppy. And I distinctly remember going, thinking to myself, what on earth am I going to do with this puppy? Uh -huh. I, this is like the worst time. But I said thank you, and I accepted that gift. Mm. And uh, in about four months, I was trained by that puppy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I would try to go to work. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, until I see what else is leaving, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, yeah. Puppy it's coming. He trained me that if I didn't take him to work, he would look at me at the door. And convince me that he would die if I didn't take him to work. And the day I took him to work. Ah, it's just a little rain. Mm -hmm. I'm here, Rick. We're here. You know what? What I'll do, rather than getting everybody soaked, I'm just going to come around to the different tents and tell you the story. Okay, okay. It'll stay dry. Okay? Sounds uh, perfect. Right here. Right here. We're right here. We're right here. Oh, great. It's boring. Yeah. Golden Retrievers are water dogs. <laughs> so are Labrador Retrievers, sorry. Oh, uh, it's only rain. Nope. It'll stop in a minute. This is perfect dog training. Exactly. So, see, I, I was saying that I had this puppy and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with him, but I was working full time. <laughs> It's a big and umbrella. He looked at me at the door as I was walking out the door. If you leave me today, I'm going to be dead when, when you come back. That's what I saw in his eyes. He suckered me into it, and I took him to work. <laughs> but that's it, that's the first day I took him, I also had a phone call from Child Protective Services. As soon as I got in the door at work, this 11-year-old boy, we have to pick him up, remove him from his birth mom's home, find a foster home in a different county, and I need you to drive. And I said, I have a... We got to go now. So there I go, off on my way with this four-month-old golden retriever puppy, and we show up at this home, and it's just awful. You know, this kid is, we're two strangers coming to take him from everything he knew as normal, and we get him in the car. He's sobbing. We're trying to talk to him, and finally, about a mile down the road, that sobbing stopped, and I adjusted my rearview mirror. And I saw this puppy's head in his lap. Oh. And that's pretty much how I got involved in animal assisted therapy um, 17 and a half years ago or so. Mm -hmm. um, that dog's name was Gabe. And I don't know if you've met Huff yet. This is Huff. This is Gabe's son. Oh. <laughs> Look at him looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> that's your cue, Huff. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Not only is he Gabe's son, he's Gabe's father. If you follow oh, Gabe, Gabe too. second, yeah. Yeah. the tough son. And you know, these dogs came with the special karma about them. Like, they were a gift of two friends who were really concerned about their buddy. And uh, that karma is just carried on. And, you know, I always. I see it really as, as why everybody's here today. There was something special in that gift. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. That dog touched a lot of lives. And uh, it's hard not to choke up in sharing this story 
But that puppy started when he was four months old doing animal assisted therapy. And he came all the way over here. Because, you know, he was with me when I started this program in Menlo Park. And I would take him to the VA, and he was about 12, 11, 12 years old. And the vets all called him Grandpa. <laughs> and I had his three grandsons that were the first dogs to be trained. Hey, Hope. Should I let you go? Are you going to cause trouble? <laughs> He's, he's really <laughs> so I took Grandpa and his grandsons to the VA for the first time, and I would tell the vets, no, it's not Grandpa, it's Grandpa's. <laughs> you know, but he came out with me, and he was just, his body was failing, he was 15 and a half years old. And I had Marines coming out here from Walter Reed, who had gotten to know him and the other dogs we had. They'd come out on Fridays. And uh, whenever it was time, we had to make that decision to uh, to say goodbye to Gabe, because his body just wasn't working for him. And I called the therapist who was bringing the Marines out here, and I said, you know, I said, I'm kind of a mess. Here's what's going on. I said, and these guys, I know they've all been shot at, have been shot, have seen buddies, lost buddies. I don't want to add to their death experience. But I also don't want to prevent them from having this okay. chance to say goodbye to an old dog who's had a very successful life. Because I know that a lot of times they don't get a chance to say goodbye. And uh, I said, your call. And she asked all of these uh, Marines what they wanted to do, and they all opted to come out and bid farewell. And I'd been spending every night last week laying on the floor, kind of exchanging breaths with Gabe. And, uh, Cooled off a little bit. The old guard at Arlington would have been proud because they went in and spent about 15 or 20 minutes each just petting him and saying goodbye and saying farewell. It gave them an opportunity to say goodbye, which many of them didn't have. And I think, you know, as far as a, a dog career doing therapy, starting at four months old and having over 15 years of work helping humans and then having your last half hour of life and in essence your death being therapeutic is uh, an amazing, an amazing career. And uh, Kay, or Huff is, uh, you, know, you see the genetics in this, you see the special, where is he? He's got to come heal me right now. He's right back here. Making everybody around him part of his pack. He's done. He could be a mayor. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be better than a lot of them, too. <laughs> I, sometimes I say he's an oxytocin addict. <laughs> because he's certainly meeting his needs, too. He, he has a four-part human training system. First, you make eye contact. Then you get him petting you. Then you lean up against them, <laughs> and if they try to back away, you stage a fall. <laughs> and 95% or more times, percent of the time, he'll get his belly rubbed out of yeah. it. <laughs> They're really good at training us. And uh, just that genetic, just that trait, and it's genetics. You know, Molly does such a good job of bringing the, you know the best genetics into the dogs that we use. But it's really the, the nurturing, the puppy petting, mm. the, the village that we have yeah. that spends so much time giving love to these puppies and making them the most socially engaging beings on the face of the earth. And there's no better tool, there's no better secret weapon in dealing with some of our service members who are trying to isolate and socially disengage and trying to avoid any relationships that they can. And taking you back to 2008 when I first started this program at, at the VA, the first week there I went in and, and as a social worker I was embraced as a, a, a staff member. And the staff, the psychologists and the psychiatrists and all the other social workers and nurses were talking about this one Marine who they really didn't know what to do with. It was his last chance he tried to take his own life couple months before coming into this VA program, and that was the flagship VA program for post-traumatic stress treatment. 
we know that if we keep him here, it's, he's not engaging in treatment. He's scaring the other vets. He's sitting in the corner, very angry. We won't talk to other Marines. We can't keep him here if he's not going to engage in treatment. The only other option is we to put him in an inpatient hospital situation, and we know that's not going to really make much of a, a change. And I thought, well, I have I have a chance here. I'm going to find a time to sit next to this Marine during the day. I'm just going to look for an opportunity. And I have these three sweet little gold retriever pups, are about eight months old. I need extra trainers, and I found that opportunity right between two groups. And there he was sitting where he always sat in the corner. And I went over and just sat next to him and acted like I just didn't even know this, didn't say hi because I knew he wouldn't say hi. But I let that puppy have a little extra leash and go over and this puppy nudged him on his leg. I'll use this. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you want God to talk to <laughs> but I let I let that puppy nudge him on his leg and this Marine, he turned to the side like he was annoyed. And I let the dog have a little bit more leash and pretend like I wasn't paying attention. And the dog came over to the other side and said, how about this side, Marine? <laughs> and he shifted again. And the dog said, oh, okay, I can play this game. And he came over on the other side. And that time he got up on his lap. Oh, I cannot be ignored. And he the sweetest little gold retriever kids. Yeah. <laughs> and this Marine, he smiled. He could not help but smile. <laughs> And I, at that point, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But he, wow, he really seems to be taking a liking to you. And as a matter of fact, I could use some extra help. We need to teach this dog to do these tasks, pull wheelchairs, turn lights on, open doors, that could then be helping a fellow vet dog. No, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Is the haircut like this? <laughs> <laughs> so I... I said, I could use your help. You know, here's an application. If you wouldn't mind considering it, you know, I could use your help. And I left it at that. And to everybody's amazement, the next morning he had filled out that application and turned it underneath the, the therapist's door. And nobody could believe that he would show any initiative. This guy wouldn't talk to any, I mean, no. And that day he started training the dogs. And all I did was focus on... Here's how you do it. Do this, do this, do this. You know, I talk about, hey, you have to use a good voice. You have to sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Be assertive. Dial, right? Got, got it? Good. Then I'd say, hey, now when your belly hits the ground, you have to let them know they did a good job. And you use the praise voice, which sounds more like Richard Simmons. <laughs> I grew up in western Pennsylvania. Guys don't sound like Richard Simmons. <laughs> These are guys with severe emotional numbing. They don't sound like Richard Simmons. But I make fun of it. I say, look, you can't say good dog. It won't mean anything. It's the same thing as if you say, when some civilian comes up to you and says, thank you for your service, you know, it doesn't really mean a lot. But you know when someone's sincere and they're looking you in the eye and they're really appreciative, you know the difference. And he started using that phrase. He started pretending to sound happy. Is all, I said, look, I'm not saying you have to be Richard Simmons or sound, you just have to pretend to sound happy to train this dog for a fellow vet or a fellow Marine. And this guy would do anything to help out a fellow Marine. And the reason he was avoiding doing anything, any engaging in treatment, is because underneath it all, he didn't think he deserved to feel better because he and his best friend had switched places before going over to anti-tank mine in the home and his best friend was killed. So people were saying, hey, take this pill, do this, it'll make you feel better. And he didn't think he deserved to feel better. But our approach was saying, let's not talk about you right now, let's talk about the vet that needs this dog train. And we went around that and gave him that sense of being able to give back, and that's exactly what he needed. I had an a email about a, <laughs> three weeks it. ago from the same Marine asking if I would sign a, a write an a uh, letter of recommendation so he could get in the, in the MSW program for a social work degree. Awesome. It's, it's, That's great. Yeah. I think what I want to really hammer in here is that the only way that those stories can happen is that we need the most special dog. And all of the love <laughs> you're giving these dogs and and all the love that you're giving to us, even virtually, 
is uh, it's making a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you. I, this is phenomenal. I, I, I told somebody, I said, I'm, I feel like I'm, I get to feel like I'm just a small part of this now. And that's a really good feeling for me because it says this is going to be sustained and grow, you know. Some love. Hey, Huff, can we see your other end? Hey, Huffster. Huff, look good, boo. 